year and a half had passed since the haunting of Timothy's ghost came to an end, but nonetheless, the engines of the Pad Controllers Railway still kept the memory of the legendary story as well as the troubled soul of Timothy deep within their thoughts. During the aftermath, fan analysis on the branch line had grown, thanks to the visiting people who had come to visit Sodor. Due to the amount of expanding visitors, Thomas and Percy had to take turns in pulling passenger trains and freight work. But the engines didn't mind, for they knew it was all part of their routine to give many memories to the visitors for Sodor. It was the only remaining railway that kept steam alive and strong. The railway network was doing very well and handling great business. The mainline engines handled the much busier and heavy work in order to run like clockwork. Days and weeks went by, more rambles and tourists from other parts of the world flowed to the island. The railway became more busy, more trains were needed, and Soldier had now begun a passenger courier ship company to offer passengers pleasure chorus. This was seen in the best interest to expand the popularity of Soda than ever before, and with the new core ships company opened, the railway would get more and more visitors than any other railway in the world. One dark, grey, gloomy day, Henry and Gorn were double-headed the express from Vickerstown to Napford Station. The two big engines were running ten minutes late due to some troubled passengers, who have been deliberately holding up the train for being plain stupid. They flashed by through Bather, through Crovens Gate, and into the countryside. Oh, who in the world was that? Gon felt himself going slower and slower. The driver stopped the train. What has happened to me? I feel so weak. I hate to say this, but you've burst your safety valve. Again. No, not again. Oh, the indignity. Looks like we'll have to call for help. I can't take Gordon to the train by myself. Luckily for both the engines and the crews, the signal box was at the site and they went to tell the signal man about the situation. As Gordon and Henry waited to be rescued, they noticed something from the corner of their left eyes. There was a novel line currently present. It was rusty and several overgrown. It had not been used in a very, very long time due to being abandoned. None of the Fat Control's engines had ever seen it before, or even heard about it. Huh? That's strange. What's that line over there? I don't know, Henry. It could have been a line that we once used, but we were not aware of it. Looks like more like an abandoned branch line from my view. If so, who used to run it? And who did it belong to? Henry couldn't find an answer. He became lost in the thought about the line. I wanted to know more about it. After he and Gorn were rescued by Boko, Henry took a slow train to Ellsbridge Station to pick up Thomas's passengers. As he waited, he and his driver overheard something on the radio from inside the small station. As of earlier reports of today, the National Trust has bought the Kirkrobin branch and wishes to restore and open it, for it has been seen in the best interest by those who want to see steam run more than ever. Arrangements have begun in earnest. The railway's leader, Sir Toppenhat, has offered his service to help out with the project. A new service will be drawn up and it will attract more visitors to the island of Sodor. It will be an exciting new chapter in the railway's history, for the Kirkwoodburn branch was once a major part of Sodor's early life and has been abandoned for decades. Now it awaits its return for a new life. The Kurt Rowan branch. So that's what me and Gordon saw. It sure is, Henry. As a matter of fact, it dates all the way back to when my own family used to work on it. You know about it too? Of course I do. Please tell me. Oh, sure thing. I'll tell you all about it. The Kirk Roman branch line was a branch that was operated by three small boxy engines from the Sodor and Mainland Railway. They were called Niall, 
Clive and Roger. However, other engines would come and give a helping hand if neither of them were away for repairs. The line started at Calsfund Road, where it connected with the main line from Rolls Castle to Kirk Roman. Beyond Kirk Roman, there was a small dock where fishing boats are stationed. Both my grandfather and my father worked as station masters at Rolls Castle. The branch was running well, but as they say, nothing lasts forever. Hard times soon fell, and with the Great Depression coming, the line couldn't cope, and it closed down. After that, my grandfather and my father retired. They've both sadly passed away since then. Over the years, the small towns that served the Kirk Roman branch have long forgotten about it. But now that it's going to be put back into service, it'll bring back great memories to those who used to work on it. Days later, on a slightly foggy morning, Rosie was putting an observation coach to the line. The fat controller was on board. She made it to Kelstrup Road and carefully steamed onto the abandoned line. Rosie stopped at bridges and tunnels for the fat controller as well as the inspectors to do surveys of the line and its surroundings. They made it to the first station, Rolf's Castle. As the inspectors looked around, the station looked old and worn out, but oddly, its overall structure seemed to be in very good condition. They soon moved on to the next station at Kirk Roman. Again, as with the last one, the station seemed to be in perfect condition, but the line itself was old and rusty and needed to be replaced. Rosie looked around the surroundings. For some strange reason, she was feeling uneasy. You alright? What's the matter? I'm kind of feeling a bit... well, unsure about being here. I mean, it's not that I don't like it here, but... It's something that I can't explain right. The driver thought that Rosie may have not slept right and must be getting an overdrive thought in her mind. The fat controller walked up to her. The Kirk Roman branch line seems to be in great condition. It will need a few things cleared away and repairing, but I think overall we'll have this ready for the spring season next year. Excuse me for asking, sir, but... What about the small dock further down the line? Does that need inspecting? It's still in operation. The Council of Kirk Robin preserved it and has since kept the docks in working order. Its small fleet of fishing boats are currently in use of selling or delivering cargo from the mainland. The Flying Kipper will also have some use there for that some small deliveries of fish can be made. As for passenger trains for the two stations, that will be no problem. I will soon find the right engines to run it on the line once it's completely repaired. Rosie felt slightly nervous from what she had heard as the fat controller and the inspectors climbed aboard the observation coach. Just then, a sudden gust of wind blew from out of nowhere, followed by a cold drop in the atmosphere around their era. Rosie felt the chills in her boiler, and she started to get more tense. I think we must stay here Something or someone is watching us nearby. As she pulled away, Rosie thought she saw a mysterious figure of what looked to be a man watching her through the mist.
plans to reopen the line were soon put into action. Emily was assigned in handling the engineering trains, while James took charge in taking goods trains on the line. Sometimes they would take in turns when one of them were to take the other. They both felt proud at their new duties. With great teamwork, the repairing of the line was going at a quick pace, and soon it came to work on the station at Wolf's Castle. It would take about a few weeks or months to complete, but there were more than enough workmen to get the job done. One night, James was given a job to take some workmen with T-reels to the line for the night shift workers. He had made good progress and soon reached the old line, turning onto it. He made it to Rolf's castle where the workmen were waiting. James sizzled nicely as he watched them get to work. The night was clear with stars twinkling in the sky. But then, the red engine and everyone else suddenly felt a drop in temperature that went cold. Huh? What in the world is going on? What's with this cold feeling? As he saw the workmen commencing work on the station, James thought he saw a man. One he did not recognize. He was at the edge of the station, as if he was observing the work in progress. Who's that? I didn't see him when picked up the workman earlier today. The man walked away, and then around the brake van. Out of his sight, he waited to see him come from the other side, but he didn't. What the? Where? Where's he gone? Then there came the sound of another engine's puffing. James almost gasped when a shadowy figure of a tank engine rolled past him before it suddenly vanished. No! No! It couldn't be! What in the name of Satan did we just see? Never mind that! Get me out of here! Get me out of here! the workmen and the engineering train behind. James raced along the main line and then stop until he reached Rickerstown. When they arrived, the driver and fireman spoke to the station master. James told Emily about what had happened the night before. That's some story, James. Are you sure your mind wasn't playing a trick on you? I'm not kidding. I saw what I saw. It scared me out. That unknown tank engine. It looked... and shape. It looked like... Who do you think it was? I only saw it for a short moment. But then it vanished! Work on the Kirk Roman branch line continued on. After a few months, the station of Rolf's castle was completed, and work moved on to the next station at Kirk Roman. Since James was now working on the other jobs, Thomas and Rosie took over in helping Emily.
As the weeks passed by, repairs and restoration to the station of Kirk Roman was eventually completed. Next came the replacement of the old rails. This took about a few months to do, but thanks to the amount of teamwork from the workmen, both day and night, it was nearing completion. There's been a change of plan. Emily, you'll be needed to take the Flying Kipper to Tidmouth Harbor, where Henry is due to take it to the mainlands. Edward will take the engineering train, and Rosie and Thomas will have to stay here and take turns in doing night shunting at the docks. Emily took the Flying Kipper away to Tidmouth Harbor, leaving Thomas and Rosie behind. Two tank engines soon went to work in shunting trucks. Rosie went first, leaving Thomas to rest in the shed, and his crew could get some rest too. Rosie worked her hardest for the next several hours. After shunting some empty vans, it was time for her to switch with Thomas. But before she could, a cold drop in temperature was felt, and a layer of fog came down. The driver and fireman could hardly see, and decided not to take any risks, and kept Rosie where she was. Oh my goodness! I don't like this at all! You should never have come here. Who's there? You dare come to this place? Now you will be punished for your sins. Rosie became frightened. Then she nearly screamed and hover when she saw an unknown figure walking past her. From where he was going, he was heading towards the shed where Thomas was sleeping in. Oh, oh no! I have to warn Thomas! Huh? Who are you? You! You are on my railway! You and your friends have invaded my place of rest, disturbing it! What are you talking about? Are you pretending to be a ghost or something? Because if you are, I'm not buying it. Don't you even know who I am? I was once the controller of this railway. This was my own, until I was forced to leave and go to Sodor, where I took over. I had to deal with it, and most of the engines were old and out of shape. Even he, who I never got along with, he who was big for his own wheel and never showed me respect, and ended being treated like the way he was. I didn't care for him, and wanted him out of my sight, and I would have done by scrapping him. But that never came to me, for he killed me, and many other lives. <laughs> you know what? That is just a load of... Hang on. You're... You're not saying... You're the... No! It can't be! So the disrespectful coward shows himself at last! It can't be! No! We meet again! Timothy? Thought you saw the end of me, didn't you, Thomas? Well, I can't be stopped and will never rest until I get what I want and complete that in which I came back for. But how can this be? I thought I defeated you on the viaduct and I saw you fall. This is impossible. 
You can't kill what is already dead. I may be dead, but I still keep coming back. You and your friends were wrong about me. I still haunt Soda, and no matter what you do, I continue to strike when and where you least expect. If you're here to take me, I will not allow you to. If I go down, I'll take you with me. Finally, after all these decades, we meet again. Timothy, or should I say, number zero? Never call me by my number! I never understood it. But that always gave you a weakness. I had my own doubts when I first saw you. You seemed like a useful tank engine. Until I found out you were only a prototype of a class I knew nothing about. And always gave me a hard time. You remember, don't you? You remember when we first met on this railway? This was once our own. I was born, raised, and grew up here. When I had this job to run the line, I was going to be among the richest ever until you came along. You costed me everything, and I was forced to step down as controller of the Kirk Ronan branch. I found work elsewhere and took the role of being in charge of Sodor, while you were sold to the London, Brighton, and South Coast Railway. But after they gave you away, you came to Sodor. And once again, we met, and the troubles started once more. I never caused any problems. You were the problem. You got people who didn't know how to look after statements the right way, and made us all look like a joke. You never really knew how to run a railway, and I cared about making money. Your fate was sealed when you were going to scrap me for no reason. I may have been old because I was used up more often, and due to the fact that I was only a prototype for the E2 class. Your bad treatment on me and the other engines pushed me over, and that's why I took my revenge on killing you. But even at death, you're still on it with me. You are nothing but a pathetic excuse for a human being. And you're a pathetic excuse for a steam engine! I should have scrapped you way before then! This ends now. Leave. You were a terrible controller, with no heart or compassion to show any respect to me or the other engines. You wasted most of our lives away and didn't seem bothered about that. You only cared about your fortune, your money, and yourself. The greediness of all humans. With that, the demons you see now within me awoke. And even after my demise, I wanted you to be forgotten. But you're still a bother thus causing me to haunt Soda over the years. The things may have changed, but I still see the same faces, the same people. And you. All I ever wanted was to be a really useful engine, just like my brother Thomas. I wanted to show you that I was a really useful loco, but you saw me nothing more than a piece of scrap iron. And with that, I took your life with me and the others who were unfortunate to go as well, even though they had nothing to do with us. Now, after over a hundred years, it comes to an end. Leave now, and never come back! I won't let you! Thomas slowly opened his eyes, seeing Timothy was still there, but the ghost of the old controller had vanished. Still feeling scared, Thomas found the courage to speak. I... I don't understand. How could this happen? All this time, you were after me, wanting me gone, 
but now you have come back and... Thomas, there's more to my story than you think. Everything that has been told and revealed is only part of something much bigger. When you first started out in your young life, we used to live together. And this railway, the Kirk Roman branch, used to be my home, and I enjoyed it here. But as I once told you, the London, Brighton, and South Coast Railway owned me. But they decided to keep me working here until I was retired near the end of 1913. But that didn't last long. And the rest, you already know. Everyone knows about my demise, but they'll never be able to understand it. However, they failed to know another thing. And that is the story of our past, Thomas. The story of you and I. For what I've seen, you and your friends are restoring this line to what it once was. I would not allow you to do that. But since that old controller, that no good heartless human is gone, I will let this continue. But if you get to run it, I will give you your last rights. And then the island of Sodor will no longer have its number one engine. <laughs> I saw it all, Rosie. It was him, my brother, Timothy, and that man was the former controller who once ran this railway. I was shocked, but it turns out I didn't defeat the ghost train after all. He's still here and still coming for me, but for some strange reason, he let me go. But frettingly said that if I was to run this line when it's finished being restored, he will take me down. I know, I know, but I won't let it happen. The thing between me and my brother is not over, but somewhere, sometime, someday, it will end, and hopefully he will let go and move on this time. However, I did see some part of him go. The old controller, the one who made Timothy into what he became, was here, confronting me and seemed to remember me, but then Timothy showed up and from what I saw, he put him in his place and laid him to rest, or perhaps sent him down to hell, if it were. My brother's still fighting with his inner demons, but I think he's been able to put an end to it in some parts of his past. A few more months passed, and the project to restore the Kirk Roman branch was completed at last. On the day of its reopening, a few days later at Curlstorp Road, a little ceremony was held with a few speeches and special congrats to those involved who had worked and helped to get the branch line back into service. Ladies, gentlemen, and engines, it is with great pride and joy that I thank you all for coming on this very special day that marks the beginning of a new chapter in the history of the North Western Railway on the island of Sodor. For everyone that was involved in this project in restoring the Kirk Roman branch to its former glory, they are to be congratulated for they put their hard work with every ounce of dedication, sweat and blood to complete it on time to make it to this opening date. I would also like to thank the people, the public and customers who helped raise the money to support the project as well as the engines on Sodor who took their part in the restoration. 
Today is a day that you will take a step back in time, at a time when this small branch line was once among many of the early railways that helped build this railway into what it is today. And we dedicate it to those who once worked on it years ago before our time. Now, I, Sir Toppen Hat, declare the Kirk Roman branch that runs from Calsford Road to Kirk Roman officially open. Lily was given the honor to hold the first passenger train on the line. She gave a cheerful blast of her whistle as she puffed down the track and into the wilderness. have passed after the successful reopening of the branch line. Thomas had been ordered to take some empty fish vans to the docks at Kirk Roman, a bring back loaded ones for that evening's flying kipper. They were needed to be filled with fish for a huge load had to be caught the day before. After leaving his brake van near the shed, he shot his vans next to the docks. Fishermen were there, having just half completed loading the other vans with crates of fish, Thomas backed off to turn around to get water for the return journey. While the blue tank engine enjoyed his long drink, he could sense the presence of Timothy, even thought he couldn't see him. Wherever you are, hear this. No matter how you will try and succeed in your quest to take me down, this railway will always have its number one engine. You'll never be able to, just like the first time. Timothy, if you can hear this, I know a part of your inner demons has left, and you're slowly but surely giving up all your hatred from your past. What I saw between you and the ghost of the old controller was one of them. You may not believe it, but somewhere in time, or somewhere down the line, you will let go, and finally be able to rest in peace with the rest of my brothers and sisters. But there is none. It's already too late for me. Forgive me. But there is no peace. <laughs>